Good afternoon guys and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to, as Dave comes in, some mid-handicap ball testing. So, last week you'll have seen the first episode of this. We tested one of the most iconic golf balls that we see on the golf course, which is the Strixon AD333. So, again, working out around about 26 to 28 pounds, depending where you get them online. So, a much more affordable ball, a two-piece ball, in comparison to what we're going to be comparing it to today, which is, as Tightlist will say, the number one Golfing ball in golf. Ball. We are going to be using the Tightlist Pro V1, the standard Pro V1 here today. And we're going to compare those two and try and show you exactly, hopefully with Dave hitting two great shots, of the differences <laughs> you'd expect to see. So with the two-piece ball, with the AD333, we are expecting it to launch higher. That's what it's designed to do with the cover that it has got on there. Whereas with a three-piece urethane golf ball, we're starting to see that this should launch lower. And Dave would be somebody, if he finds a Pro V, absolutely chuffed, like everybody <laughs> else would be. Everyone's over the moon to find a Pro V1. But we're gonna try and show you the example here that the pin is tucked behind the bunker if we're going to launch this low and it doesn't get as much carry, that could potentially go into the bunker and not get the distance we want. It's also not going to potentially generate enough spin on this ball to stop it. So if it launches lower, lands on the green, it might then run through the back and leave Dave a short-sided chip shot, or it might not reach and go in the bunker. Whereas with the two-piece golf ball, with the AD333, it may launch higher, we get more carry there, it is a little bit downwind and this is going to come in with more landing angle, land on the green, land a little bit softer and potentially stop quicker than a Pro V1. But if you stood there and thought, what ball should you use, a lot of people would say, I need a Pro V1. Yeah, because we all think it spins more and it's going to stop quicker, but what you're saying is because that comes in at a higher angle, yep. it's going to stop because of the higher angle. because somebody like me ain't getting that much spin anyway. Correct, and with Dave's club head speed, which is very up middle ground, just like probably the majority of people watching this video, we're not going to generate enough spin. We haven't got enough speed to get as much spin on the ball as possible, so we want to start relying on the landing angle more, making sure we know our carry numbers, making sure we know we can carry it with X club, depending on what yardage you've got, and then we're going to be more consistent. So we're going to start straight away with the AD333 from last week. So Dave's going to come in here now, hit his normal shot. We've got 149 yards to the flag, so we have just obviously bushnelled that. It is a little bit downwind, so Dave has got a 7 iron here, which we know for Dave should carry around about 135 to 140. Yep. So again, with that landing angle, that should stop nicely, just short of the flag. So an extremely high a launching shot there. So a nice high launching shot there, Dave. So that has just got over the bunker. So that's a great shot, obviously on there, landing soft, and it looks like it's just under pin high. I will now throw you the Pro V1. I wasn't expecting to catch that then. And that's a good catch, Dave. Keep up the Thank good you. work. I'm more worried about you getting the teasing. So if you're on a, on a mat inside, it normally takes you half an hour. <laughs> that's also very true. Right, so again, Try that again. ball was just right of the flag, so really took on the bunker, which we saw that it did just get over. Now in with the Pro V1, and I'll get the traces on here. Okay, and we can Very, see mm, that no. one launched probably, and total height-wise, there I would say probably 10 feet lower, Dave. Yeah, and, yeah. It's, and it's in the bunker. And again, and that is in the bunker, like we said, the AD333 just carried over the bunkers, ran up just short of the flag, whereas the Pro V1, didn't quite reach that lower trajectory, just caught the bunker, and now Dave's gonna to have to get up and down. But we're gonna get up to the green, guys. We want to now test these with short game. We want to see with Dave's chipping, which one's easier to get close, and then with a, a longer putt, which one is he more consistent with. And this is where you got to think, guys, you want to be playing with the same ball. So if you've got 10 balls in your bag, ideally have them with the same kind of cover on, because if you're changing from a firmer ball, a two-piece ball, to a three-piece urethane or a TP5, for example, a five-piece ball, we're going to be very inconsistent with pace control. It's going to be very hard around the edge of the green to know where to land it because with how far it's going to run out. So let's get up there. Annoyingly, Chris, you were right. Come up here now, past the good old pond, and here is Dave's Pro V1. So we can see that it's landed there 
just left of my shadow under there and finished there so a tough shot whereas we can see with the Shrixen it's got over there it's left Dave an outside chance at a birdie but it's obviously a birdie chance it's on the green and Dave's hoping to get out there with a par at least but let's grab this one we're going to then play a chip shot and see how they perform Right, so we've got this chip shot here, so a little bit of green to work with. We've got to get over a little bit of a mound. So, Dave, you've gone 52. Yes. Yeah? We've got exactly identical lies. We're going to go Pro V1 first, and we're going to start to see where we're going to land this. So where are you planning on landing this, Dave? I'm thinking we've got to get over this lump first, Chris. Yeah. So I'm kind of, and I don't really want it to come off the downslope. No. Nope. So I'm thinking round about here. Okay, perfect. So, are you going to do that with both golf balls and we'll see how they react? Yeah, well, yeah. That's, that's the idea, but, you know, Famous can't lesson. guarantee. No, we can't do anything like that in golf. Can't guarantee. Yeah. Up on the green here, see where this one lands with the Pro V1. Okay, a little bit of a drop kick. Not his best strike, but it's worked. It's, it's ran not terrible, out there, Dave. result wise, anyway. So it wasn't the best strike, but let's see again with a missed strike. That's done very well. Let's see now if we can get a strike on this AD333. A good strike there. Landed oh, just what? Yeah, landed just short of his landing zone there, guys, but very easy to control. A good launch on there. Again, it was a better strike, so I'm going to give Dave another go with this Pro V1. Let's see if Dave can give himself a similar lie and get a good strike. Will it perform just as good? Again, a lot of people think instantly as you go to a, a less premium ball, you're going to lose some control around the greens. But not so from Dave there. Okay, guys, comment below what kind of golf balls you want to see us test. Do you want to see some numbers on these golf balls? If so, with what clubs? It's a much better shot there. More spin on that, Chris. So, a very similar strike, you would say, Dave. Yeah. yeah. But it certainly grabbed up a little bit more, so it didn't run out as much, and that's exactly what we'd expect to see from the two different golf balls that we've hit there. So, two similar strikes, eventually. And we <laughs> see that the AD333 actually did better for Dave on this occasion. When we're talking putter guys, it's essential that we use a very similar golf ball because the feel off the putter face is going to be massive. And realistically, where we're gonna save a lot of shots is on the putting green. If we can cancel out some three putts by having a consistent golf ball, we should have our pace control better. And that's where the majority of you are going to save shots is by improving your pace on the green. So we're gonna go with the AD333 first. So again, a little bit of a firmer feeling ball. We know this should probably come off a little bit quicker, potentially. But we saw with Dave's chip shot that it ran out nicely and yeah. did what he wanted it to do. That's a fantastic Oh, I thought port. I'd got that then. Fantastic putt. So from 30 feet, your tour average is to get anywhere inside three feet short or three feet long. We saw for Dave there, that was within six inches. So instantly there, Dave's able to get a good feel of that. He has been using this golf ball in his last couple of rounds. So he is very now... Which is unusual for me, Chris, because oh, yeah. they're not normally lost that long. Yeah, it's a, it's a couple of rounds, so very surprising for us all, Dave. But we can see he's now used to that. He's got a good feel of that. So it'll be interesting now when he goes to the three-piece urethane cover, if he has as much control. So again, oh, Dave certainly does. But that went in with some pace, guys. So yeah. I would say if that missed the hole then that would have gone maybe, it would have been inside the three feet past, which is inside tour average, but you can see two different putts there, and Dave struggled a little bit with pace. It was two different paces. Yes, he's hold the Pro V1, <laughs> which he would take, but that's not going to happen every time. So guys, we're going to do this over the season, so we're going to start to see again which balls you want us to compare. Is any going to beat the Pro V1, but so far, the Pro V1, I would say, is not a ball that Dave should be using regular, which is music to his ears. Because well, it's going to it kind of is, money. but what am I going to do with the all, all the ones that Mr. Saracen's already bought? Well, you can use them until they're lost, but okay. uh, just in practice. All right. So, guys, comment below what kind of golf balls you want to see, what golf ball are you using, and next week we'll have another golf ball out here. We're going to test this on the next hole. It's a ball that is probably the best value golf ball on the market, yeah. so we'll see you then. See you soon.